What I'd like to do here is demonstrate just how far convergence has come in the last 10 years. Starting out from, say, a palm pilot or a scion palm top, which at the time I thought was the bee's knees, the number of things I can do now with my not-so-humble mobile phone is nothing short of staggering. In fact, let's keep count as I go. Oh, and I'm not using this to be all fanboyish about one particular phone, but I have to use something as the example, so this Nokia N82 is just about the most converged device in the world, so let's go with this. Number one, rather obviously, there's voice telephony. It's a phone, but not just a voice phone, since video calls are possible too these days, although I, I don't use this feature much in the real world, I have to admit. Number two, as with the original Palm and Scion, my, my phone is my PDA, my personal digital assistant, with all my messages, email, contacts and calendar loaded up wherever I go, and now synced to the cloud as a backup, in case I lose it, to Google and Ovi, respectively. Number three, my phone is now my main music player, another given in 2009. An 8 gigabyte micro SD card is now dirt cheap, and it's easy to take a 100 or so CDs of music with me when I travel, with space to spare. Although the N82 has a 3.5mm headphone socket, I've been finding a, a set of high quality stereo Bluetooth headphones uh, more convenient, and warmer too, now that this is the uh, UK winter. Number four, my phone is my only camera. The N82 is a particularly good example here because it's got a Xenon flash, uh, which means I never ever have to be worried about low light levels indoors or about blurry photos because people are moving. And once taken, I can fire a photo up on Flickr or Ovi within seconds for the world to see. Seriously, I don't own a single standalone camera. Number five, along similar lines, I haven't owned a standalone video camera since 2007. My phone is my camcorder, uh, always with me. Admittedly, the VGA video quality isn't quite as good as a standalone, but it's good enough in most circumstances. And being so portable, uh, I can capture special moments without having to think ahead and lug something else heavy along. And I'm capturing a digital file, which can be directly imported into a video editor on my desktop. Number six, and this is going to sound a bit strange, but my phone is my main radio except that using the magic of Wi-Fi, I get to choose exactly the content I listen to by subscribing and then listening to a whole bunch of favourite podcasts. Interrupted by a, a child or a phone call, just pause the podcast playback, stone dead, and then carry on later without missing a word. If I need to listen to real-time radio, there's also internet radio for free from across the world, with hundreds of stations to choose from, and there's an FM radio built into most phones as well. Number seven, my phone is also my only sat-nav. Uh, in this case, Nokia Maps, with every street preloaded everywhere After I go, and full real-time voice guidance. Right. Why bother with a standalone TomTom -tom or similar? Number eight, here's another. My pedometer, the built-in accelerometer, means I can track steps made through the day or on a run, while the built-in GPS tracks my progress on the Earth's surface for, for detailed and optionally public analysis later. Number nine, and who needs an Amazon Kindle anyway? My phone is my Bible and my ebook reader too, though I'd still rather have the paper equivalents. Um, maybe I'm just old-fashioned. Number ten, finally, and I'm stretching convergence here, my phone can be my laptop. Armed with a wireless keyboard, it's easy enough to dash off a quick, if rather plain, report, or to look over someone else's presentation. I guess a complementary list would be the tasks for which my phone isn't going to replace a standalone device anytime soon. Playing games is one, although the iPhone and iPod Touch do come close at times. Web browsing is another. Both really need the big screen and the big experience. Video watching, if I'm honest, is still a job for TV or a large desktop monitor, though again, portable devices do have their place when travelling. Some of the 10 convergence functions just mentioned may not be possible on your phone, of course, but hopefully I've, I've given you a vision of how much a phone like the Nokia N82 is converged into my life and my operations. We've come a long way. I have to say I was more than a little apprehensive about reviewing this, the semi-legendary Blackberry Bold. I included it in my recent top five, mainly on the strength of my respect for what RIM have achieved with their mark, and on the fact that this is the best Blackberry they've ever made, apparently. I have to confess to not being an expert on this particular platform, a fact which uh, may have put the kibosh on at least one aspect of this review, but more of that later. 
RIM have specialised in QWERTY driven candy bar phones since the very beginning, gradually turning them from email only devices into fully fledged multitasking smartphones. However, this has come at a cost, and one which is all too evident to a newcomer to the platform like me. After extensive use of the Apple iPhone, uh, of S60 and Symbian, of Windows Mobile, I have to say RIM's interface is showing its age. If the iPhone OS is circa 2007, S60 is basically circa 2003, and Windows Mobile is circa 2000, uh, over and over again in the BlackBerry Bold I came across application dialogues and menus which appear to have been written in a different age. Apparently, large chunks of BlackBerry's OS and interface date back to 1999, almost 10 years ago, and I can well believe it. Which is not to say that the Bold's UI is bad, just that it's a BlackBerry. If you've used other BlackBerrys in the past, then you'll feel right at home. The Bold is perhaps the pinnacle of the traditional BlackBerry form, while the, the all touchscreened but distinctly problematic Storm is the first of a new, more flexible breed. At 65mm across, this is the widest phone I've tested in recent times. The width is necessary to fit in the really rather good 480 by 320 pixel 2.8 inch screen. The other good thing about the width is there's room for a decent thumb keyboard. This is an RIM speciality area and they've delivered again. It's superb. Although key travel isn't brilliant, the mechanical feedback is excellent and typing is hard to get wrong. I was disappointed to see the full stop and comma characters on shifted keys though, that's going to slow typing down. The bowl is nearly all plastic but dolled up to look like chrome on the edges and leather on the back. It's solid though, with no creaks. A roller ball on the front works well as a general pointer and you've just got to love the way it lights up. Around the sides are a micro SD slot, a voice control button, micro USB port and 3.5mm audio out jack. There's a standby stroke sleep button on the top and volume controls on the right. And a largely superfluous camera shutter key. Uh, after all, photos are mainly taken in landscape mode, surely. The camera itself is non-focusing two megapixels and nothing to get excited about. A large 1500 milliamp hour battery means that you'll easily get through a day of normal use. The software's standard BlackBerry fare, but given a facelift with new inscrutable icons. I can't stand them personally. I can't remember half of them, and I have to the, the hover the highlight over each and look at the hint at the bottom of the screen, kind of defeating the point of quick access icons. Browser is quite capable, without being an S60 Web's League for functionality or the iPhone Safari for speed. Office functions are buried a little, but there is a licensed, if rather slow and clunky, version of Documents to go, with editing functions but no document creation, spell checking or advanced formatting. For these you'll have to fork out around £50 for the premium version of the suite. RIM have even thrown in a clutch of these games, Brick Breaker, Sudoku, Solitaire, Word Mole and Poker, plus there are whispers on the wind of a new BlackBerry storefront coming in the next couple of months. They're equivalent to the iPhone App Store. There's already a thriving BlackBerry third-party app scene, so the storefront should get a good start in life. Multimedia is surprisingly strong here with a good music player and clear stereo speakers, plus good video playback of all major formats. There's a built-in GPS too, but curiously the review unit didn't come with BlackBerry Maps, so I couldn't test this. Wi-Fi is the other headline comms feature, but I found this very temperamental. Sometimes the built-in scanner would claim it couldn't see many networks, at other times it plain refused to connect at all. And the setup steps for sorting this out seemed very fragmented across the interface. And I encountered oddities like tone dialing not working reliably on automated systems. As much as RIM have given their OS a facelift, and despite the welcome multimedia additions, this is still unreservedly a BlackBerry, with huge strengths in the areas of messaging and text input, but with many weaknesses and issues elsewhere. For BlackBerry fans, this is the best one yet by a mile. For those on the lookout for something with a more elegant and modern interface, you should probably give this one a miss. This is the BlackBerry Bold 9000.